Liam, the side's playing some pretty good footy at the moment. How are you feeling about it all? Uh, yeah, it's obviously been a, a good month probably for us in terms of how the year's been. So it's um, a disappointing result on the weekend and, and, and against Richmond as well to be in the game for um, Richmond most of the game and then obviously Carlton for, for a half probably. Um, the disappointing part is the the way we dropped away on the weekend and and the way we started. So uh, we're, we're building towards our brand and our identity now. We can we can start to see that. So it's doing that for four quarters now. What did you see most say at yeah. quarter time that sort of sparked a bit of life into you guys? Um, I couldn't, I can't really recall it. He wasn't real happy though. I think um, everyone could see that. So I don't think, um, I don't think Simo's words, whatever he's chosen to say, has looked like it's worked. But I think it was probably the realisation of, of how we performed in that first quarter and everyone just coming to terms with what we've produced and, and what we know we can produce, which we've done in the last three to four weeks. So I think it was a bit of a reset, um, a little bit of kick up the, uh, you know what, and, and it got us going. So we were, all, we were all okay after that. But as I said, we fell away in the last as well. So um, not ideal. Could you pinpoint why it started so poorly on the weekend? No, I, I wish I could, but... Yeah, I can't. We, we, we were beating up around the contest early on and, and I think we, I don't know how many inside 50s we leaked, but it was too many and um, eventually we, we couldn't put up with it down back. So um, a couple of our contests we didn't get right as well. So it's, um, there's some pretty quality forwards up there and when you're giving them that many inside 50s, they, they're going to kick a score. Speaking of the forwards, that Mackay and uh, Kerner kicked about 10, 11 goals between them. How tough was it to go up against those two? Oh, they're, they're great players, two informed forwards and they're obviously building towards something pretty good there, I think, at Carlton. So we knew they were, they were a pretty good side and we knew that if we did give them those inside 50s, there's, you know, as good as our defenders will be, our big boys, that they're, they're going to get their chances from 70 inside 50s. So um, it, it's, you know, you look at the stat sheet and they've kicked 10 or 11 between them, but I thought our bigs did OK, but, you know, if, if our bigs had 70 inside 50s, I reckon they'd be doing all right too. You just mentioned your brand and building your identity moving forward. I, we just saw Josh Kennedy out there really taking your hands-on role, like, with the younger guys and... Um, in terms of, you know, not coaching, but obviously, like, taking a, a bigger role as an experienced player. What's it like to be an experienced player in the side at the moment? Um, yeah, I sort of, I suppose I'm moving a little bit towards that, but, yeah, um, having those blokes to learn off, even for me still, to learn off Shannon Hearn, um, in particular in the back line, has, has been awesome. And I think um, I think that started from, from maybe our flag year. I think that was when our senior boys really took on that leadership role in my time at the footy club anyway, so... I've really enjoyed working with those boys. As moving through into that um, part of my career a little bit more as well, it's it's been um, challenging this year with with the, probably the performance that we've produced, especially early on. But I've enjoyed the challenge of of bringing blokes along, and we've obviously um, been able to blood a lot of new blokes into our team as well. So we've got 45 blokes that have played AFL footy. Um, there's 15 of them that hadn't probably tasted it before, so you, ne you need to teach them pretty quickly. And definitely there's more of a hands-on role for all of us in that position, that, um, or the experienced position to, to hand that down. Did Simo ask try. you to take that role on? You guys to take more of that role on? Uh, yeah, and I think it's organically happened, but Simo definitely has has press for us to help, um, because not that the boys need it, but it, to make it at AFL footy, you, you've got to be shown the way a little bit, and I've been lucky enough that I have been, um, and now I can start to implement that to a few of our younger boys, and I've really enjoyed working with them some of them you know you're good mates with them anyway it's not like they're, they're school students and you to teach them like a teacher so it, we're all learning together as well but um certainly i think the especially the leaders above me um the more senior boys have uh, yeah i've loved still learning off them as well do you think josh kennedy's you know done at the end of the season are you trying to squeeze as much out of him as you can only a few weeks left um yeah i don't know i'm not sure he'll, he'll say he's done he's um cause it, what did he kick five a couple of weeks ago or whenever it was but um so we're still seeing that but um yeah, obviously we're, we're trying to get the most out of out of our players every week. And, and JK, I think the way he's still attacking his footy at 34 or five or um, whatever he is now, it's um, yeah, it's pretty inspirational to see him still going because his his body is you know it's pretty bad. He's done it for a long time, and um, yeah, to still see him doing what he's doing during the week and, and on game days, yeah, it's pretty inspirational stuff. You've got a pretty good relationship with JK. You're pretty close with him. It's got to be weird if he does step away at the end of the year, and is it? Getting a bit weird that you're running around on track and you know he's not going to be here for much longer. Yeah, I suppose you've, I've played eight years with him now, so you just yeah, just naturally over time you you become close and play a lot of footy together, a lot of away trips. There's a lot of time that we spend um, with the boys, and and yeah, obviously every year, unfortunately we lose we lose players, we lose mates, and um, especially someone like when JK does step away, it'll, it'll be um, yeah, obviously a 
a big loss, but um, the legacy that he would have left at the footy club when that time is, is yeah, will be pretty big. So he'll, he'll be one of those blokes that we're still speaking about in 10 years' time at supper. Or well, 10 years, I might be here either. But, um, but yeah, it's, it, I think he's, his legend will live on, definitely. And you've got Hawthorne at the MCG this weekend. Are you looking forward to another chance to get out there? Yeah, absolutely. I think we played the G quite well um, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, Hawks, we haven't come up again against them this year. Um, they're playing a pretty exciting brand of footy. I, I, I haven't seen a whole heap of them play um, in depth, but enjoyed watching some of their blokes go about it. So um, another opportunity to get back to the G. And I think, yeah, I said as I said, I think we handled it quite well a couple of weeks ago, and, and hopefully we can implement that again. Sam Mitchell as a coach as well. We're looking forward to seeing him again. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it'd be interesting. Obviously, a great coach, Mitch, and what he gave us in his in his short time here was was pretty big. So. Um, I know that Hawthorne are well led, so it'd be um, yeah, it'd be a great challenge for us. Hawthorne had about a thirty point head start in their first quarter, and you guys had the poor first start in your first quarter. Is that something you guys will look at during the week? Uh, I, I think um, irrelevant of how any other team is going. Um, I think our starts we we will dive into um, a little bit more because it has been. Uh, not an issue, but it's, we, ha we have had some poor starts that have put us out of games probably early and it's, and it's hard to claw our way back. We did on the weekend and then obviously ran out of gas in the last two. So we, we don't want to give any team that head start. But um, yeah, certainly we'll be making it more about us in terms of how we can go about it. You see Sam Mitchell obviously coaching Hawthorne back to his old club. Today, David Noble's gone from North Melbourne. That's obviously Adam's old club. Do you see there any way that Adam might make his way back to North? Uh, I don't think so. I, I certainly hope not. I, I, Simo's, I think he's still contracted here and, and he's 100% committed um, downstairs. He's, he's the most passionate bloke about this footy club at the moment and where we're heading. So I think um, Simo's in with us for the long run and um, yeah, he's 110% yeah, committed um, to what he's going to do here. And you're obviously part of that core group in the leadership group. You're at that age is going to take the club forward and you're confident Simo's the right man for the job and he's kind of got what it takes to take you through that next period? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's been evident this year. It's been a, it's been a tougher year than any in my time at the footy club, and, and probably Simo's as well. And um, if he hasn't jumped off yet, then I don't think he ever will. So it's, um, you know, I'm excited to keep working with Simo um, to to build us back up to where we know we can get to. And um, yeah, as I said, there's there's plenty of boys down there that'll um, that'll get behind him as well. You lost Jamie Cripps um, just before the game. Obviously, is there any more concern with um, COVID? Obviously, with the reinfection dates changing and things like that. Is there any heightened concern after Cripps uh, was ruled out? Yeah, well, Cripper, that was Cripper's first uh, bout of COVID, I think. So that was um, a little bit different for Cripper. Like, he said he couldn't get it, but it got him. But um, yeah, there, there's still that concern, obviously. It's still around. Um, we've got to be realistic about that, but still taking measures to, to try and reduce the risk and um, and, and still get that, that balance right with, um, I suppose, engagement with fans and all that sort of stuff, because we've missed that as well. And as the world starts to open back up, we, we get to enjoy that a little bit more again. But yeah, certainly we've got to be on our toes still with, with the reinfections and stuff like that. So um, we're still rat testing and, and wearing masks in meetings and all that when we're all um, close together. So we're still taking our, I suppose, our, yeah, risk mitigation with that. So it's, um, yeah, hopefully we're getting back this week. I'm not sure if you saw, but Michael Walters and Michael Frederick um, received some Pretty horrific abuse online in the past few days. Okay, no, I haven't of seen that. No. Well, some kind of racially motivated right. abuse. Um, is, how disappointing is that, especially being at the Eagles and the club's done so much here to try and take a stand against that? How disappointing is it to still see that stuff popping up? Yeah, it's oh, it's just it's really flattening. And, and you know, as someone that has never been in that position to be racially abused or vilified, it's just um, can't really put myself in the shoes. I don't know how they'd be feeling about it, but it just—I know that it's—it's it's pretty sickening to to hear that that's still, still going on. Um, obviously, education needs to ramp up. Everything around it needs to keep ramping up if, if people are still dishing that out. So, it's um, yeah, it's pretty sickening to hear that that's that's going on. And um, I, I don't know, Michael. I know Sun Sun, and he's he's a quality man. Um, so I feel for him that he's going through that at the moment. Are you aware of it when you're playing? Like, can you hear it? Has it, has it heightened? Has it got worse over the years or has it got better? The racial when stuff? Uh, yeah, when you're playing. Well, I, I, I don't hear it, but um, yeah, it's, then again, it's it's not directed at me, which, um, yeah, so I'm, it, it must still be there if it's still this issue that we're talking about. Um, we, I, I think there's the education is growing around it um, and and hopefully being part of a football club like this, we've got a great platform to, to project from. Um, but yeah, it's still got to get out to more people, obviously. How does it affect the group? Like obviously in the past, um, too many times, you know, Lee and Nick have all received different forms of kind of this abuse. How does it affect the, 
them as players and kind of you as teammates in the group when this stuff does happen it must you know, flatten the group and you know be really tough yeah it is I, I think the the biggest part for us is just seeing that it, it really does get the boys down um, and, and credit to them they handle it quite well um, the way that they're able to come out and play and keep performing and training hard but you, yeah it, it's it really does it sucks for for them and their families that they're, that they're put through this um, time and time again and um, unfortunately, yeah, the, like we've seen, it's obviously not it's not stopping. Um, I th yeah, it's just there's no there's no tolerance for it as far as I'm concerned. And the club, like I said, the club does has done a lot in the past for it. It's got a very rich history of kind of Indigenous players um, here. But do you think the AFL and the league does enough to really go hard at these issues? Uh, I, yeah, hard for me to speak on. Again, it, it's something that. We, we probably do need to sit down with um, with those boys and, and discuss. Um, if they don't feel there is enough support, then it needs to increase. But if they think there's enough support and it's just some some silly people behind a keyboard um, saying whatever they want to say because maybe there's no consequences, then um, that's on them. But I, I think the AFL and our club, I think they have made good inroads in, in attempting to try and nullify this. So uh, it's it, hard for me to say, but I think there has been some progressions made. And it's a, a positive one, a bit random, but um, the club's tried a few different things to get them spirits up this year, um, bringing different people in and stuff. But Masto, you know, yeah. being the runner, Simo made some comments the other day about him being out there. What's it like having Masto back at the club and, and out on the field and celebrating things with JK and stuff like that? Yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it was cool to see Masto and JK embrace after that 700th goal. So, yeah, he, he's great to have around the club. He's a little energizer bunny. We saw how he played his footy and, and how he was um, when he had the jumper on. But... Yeah, even with the uh, with the pink the pink suit on, he's um, he's still bringing that energy, and um, he's up and down on the bench. He's celebrating goals. He's he's all over the place. So it's um it's been a great boost of energy for us, and he, he was a great team man, a great role player, and I think he's come back in and um, he's driving that a little bit on game day as well for um, for us. So it's it's pretty exciting to to see him back around because he just yeah he's another loud voice that gives presence. We just saw Gov pop his head out at training. Yeah. Um, is, has, has, when did he return and what's his workload like? Has it increased recently? Yeah, Gov's been around um, probably downstairs a little uh, for, for a while now, but I think um, we find more out at the end of the week on, on how Gov's looking um, in terms of returning. So uh, there's a little bit more to come out, yeah, probably later on in the week. I think he's catching up with the surgeons. Elliot Yo out there on the track as well. Obviously looking forward to him coming back in the next few weeks. Yeah, yep, that'd be great to have him back in the side. I think it's um, yeah, one to two sort of week thing now. So um, you know, you fear the worst a little bit when they go down with a hammy like that. And it was it was pretty clear that he he'd done a okay one, but some pretty good results um, at the back end of it. And yeah, one to two, so he's not too far away. And your fellow backman Tom Cole, how's he tracking? Do you hope he can get in before the end of the season? Really hope so. Yeah, I'm not all over where Cole is at. Obviously, with those longer term injuries, it's. Um, yeah, there's not as such an acute return to play, but um, yeah, he's going really well. He's back moving around pretty well. Um, another one like Masto, a bit of an energizer bunny for us. So to have him back out there will be great as well. But um, whether it's this year or next year, um, as long as he's right to go, he'll be he'll be all good. And peppering the injury questions, but Nick um, Simo said he was a bit sore. You know, he's had a fair layoff um, earlier in the year. Do you think he'll play this week? There's a chance you might give him a rest and see how he's going. He looks a bit sore and labouring. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure with Nick. I think. Um, yeah, he, he's obviously had his knee issues as well and, and coming back off those, there's always some issues your first couple of games back, you sort of something else will pop up and you've got to look after that. So he's a bit lighter on today, but I think that'll just be more part of the strategy to, to get Nick going week to week. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he'll play, but, uh, yeah, not sure where exactly where he's at, but, yeah, it'll be part of the normal strategy this early in the week to keep him pretty low-key. Just quickly, your body, it's um, you've had a few decent injuries in the past few years. Um, how are you feeling back into the year? You feel... Yeah, make it through comfortably to the end of the season. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll get through pretty well. Yeah, I'm actually I'm feeling feeling good. Obviously, the lack of preseason um, hurt a bit earlier on, but um, as you get to get going with games and your fitness starts to come through through game day, so um, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Yeah, coming into the last uh, six or seven games, however many we've got to go, so I um, should be able to see the year out pretty well. Sino and Shuey both mentioned full court efforts was was something you'd be looking forward to getting um, towards the end of the season. Is that something that the club's really focused on? Yep, definitely. Yeah, as as I've said, we our best is pretty good at the moment. So um, if we can harness that for for close to four quarters, we think we'll be in most games um, that we play in in the next uh, coming couple of months. So yeah, four quarters is is the goal. And um, if we match it like we do in the second and third, then yeah, we're right the way to winning a game. So that'll be um, that'll be the focus.